Today we're going to be looking at six different ways that we can use the underscore in Python. And the very first way we can use it is actually in the Python console. And this has to do with some basic math or if you have a variable you want to use again. So let's get started with creating an X variable and then create a Y variable, which is also going to equal 10. And when we go ahead and do X plus Y, we're going to get the output of 20. And if we want to use 20, we can go ahead and add the underscore and say underscore times 10. And we're going to use the last used value, which is 20, of course. Now, if we go ahead and type in something such as name is Mario, and we say we want to just print the name, and then we go ahead and say underscore times two, we're going to get the string multiplied by two. So it's just going to use the last used variable in the console. And again, you can use it as many times as you want, and it will continue to use whatever was used last. The next way we can use underscores is with formatting numbers. So if we have a number such as billion, and we just type it out like this, I personally don't even know if that's a billion. It's really hard to read. So a easier way to do this is to go ahead and just add the underscores so we can be certain that we created the number that we were looking for. And it can also be 1 million and it's going to follow the same concept. And in case you have a different number system, it doesn't have to be every three zeros. It can be one, one, two, one, two, three, and it will still work. And the underscores are ignored by the compiler. So if you print these numbers, you're not going to get any of the underscores printed to the console. As you can see, this crazy number here just prints it in this format. Now, the third way to use this is in loops. So for example, if we have a for loop, which says for, underscore in range three, we're going to print hello. What the underscore does is act as a placeholder. So we don't have to create some random variable for no reason. And if we run the program, you'll see that we're just going to print hello and we're not going to have any value associated with this underscore. Now, the fourth way is a little bit more neat because we can go ahead and create some values such as one, two, three, four, five and format that and I'll put this inside a parentheses to show that it is a tuple. Now, what the underscore is going to help us with here is extracting the values that we want to extract. For example, if we only want to take one, two, and five, we can easily do that with underscores. We can say we want to take the first value, the second value, then we want to ignore the third and the fourth, and we want to take the fifth value, and that's going to equal the values. So these are going to correspond to this over here. So we didn't have to randomly create those values in the center. Now, if we go ahead and print A, B, and C, you'll notice that we'll get one, two, and five. And there is a shorthand expression because sometimes you might have a lot of underscores that you need to write in between values. And the best way to simplify this is to remove that underscore and add an asterisk right in front of the underscore. Because as you may know, the asterisk works as an unloading variable, which means it's going to take everything in this range between B and C, and it's going to absorb it. So it's going to have the same exact output, except this time we can also decide to exclude B, and it's going to work exactly the same way. So now it's only going to take one and five and exclude two, three, and four. So as you can see, we'll just remove that and print A and C, and we'll have one and five. Now, the fifth way has to do with name clashing, which means sometimes you have a name that's reserved by Python, and it can be a really good name for what you want to name your variable. So let's pretend we still want to use it, such as if you had a school and that school had a classroom, you can go ahead and try to create a variable with class, but you'll see that you'll immediately get an error. So what the underscore helps us with is avoiding that. And as you can see, just by adding a tailing underscore, we can now just go ahead and use that variable as a normal variable. And if we print that, it works just as normal. Now it's important to use this underscore after because if we use a underscore in front of class, that has a different convention. And that's actually what I'm going to go over in use case number six. So let's go ahead and delete this example. And I'm going to go ahead and create a class called fruit. And inside here, we're going to have an initializer and the initializer will take a name of type string and self.name is going to equal name. Now in Python, they don't really have the concept of private variables and anything that's private. 
everything's accessible on some level, but there are some naming conventions that allow us to tell the user that this should be treated as private and some compilers will treat it as private so we can't accidentally access it. And the way it works is by adding the underscore. So for example, if we have an underscore ID and I actually want to create an import for this. So we're going to import UUID. So the ID for this fruit should not be accessible to the user. So here we can go ahead and create this UUID dot UUID for and just by adding this underscore, it tells the programmer that this should not be accessed outside of this class. It's only meant to be used inside the class. And one thing that's neat about Python now is that if we go down and create a fruit, which we'll just call apple, for example, and it will have the name of apple. Now, when we refer to apple, you're going to see that we can only refer to the name and it's really going to do its best to hide the ID. Now that doesn't mean we can't use the ID because it is still a public variable. As you can see, we can still print the ID out, but the compiler is going to hide it. So one very good use case for this is in case you don't want the user to see it and you actually want them to use a predefined function such as print ID, then we can go ahead and say print underscore or self dot underscore ID because this will be available inside the class. Now we don't have to go ahead and try to cheat the system again. We can go ahead and just call apple and print ID. And it's going to do the exact same thing as before, except this time we used it internally and the program was safe because the user didn't have to try to access a variable that he or she couldn't see. And that is one of my favorite use cases for the underscore. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.